and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, today on the show, we get to talk about one of my favorite topics. It's drain tile and specifically, how can you put it in in the spring in crop? How can you make that work when the crop is already coming out of the ground? Fortunately, we just have a half hour show. Otherwise, Brian would talk <laughs> literally all day about putting in that drain tile. But one thing that I do want to have some time to get to is corn fungicide use. Once you get into that V5 to V8 window, fungicide use in corn is really pretty popular. We're going to talk about some of the products and considerations you should have. Coming up later in the show, we have an iron talk and a weed of the week as well. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Corn we planted early February, we have all good emergence. So far, we can't find any condition that the wheels haven't worked. I can just say that. Closing the seed trench behind the planter is essential to establishing yields in the fall. Introducing the Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer who is tired of seeing poor stands because of uneven emergence, the Germinator is here to give your crop the strong start it needs for maximum yield. For more information, visit us at farmshopmfg.com. Darren and I get asked all the time about GMOs. Are GMOs safe? Are they dangerous? Well, today during our Farm Basics time, we want to talk a little about BT corn and specifically what it is so you can understand that a lot of these GMOs are actually very, very, very safe to humans. Well, let's just start with what BT is, Brian, because we have to abbreviate it BT because the words are so long. It's bacillus thuringiensis and you say what on earth does that mean well we talk a lot about natural products on our show and this is a bacillus strain and we've got so many bacillus strains that are being used for control of insects and other things it's a natural microbe natural microbes that's what we're talking about here yep so when you look at a bacteria like this it's actually been used in agriculture for a really long time there's a product called Dipel that gets used in organic production today. It is labeled, it is legal, it can get used in organic crops. It gets sprayed over the top for control of specific insects like, for example, the European corn borer. With the BT trait, basically instead of spraying Dipel over the top of the crop, they're taking the same basic thing and putting it into the crop. Well, what happens is the crop will produce a protein that as that corn borer takes a bite out of the corn plant, it just can't digest that certain protein because corn borers have an alkaline digestive system as opposed to us as humans, we have an acid-based digestion system. So you could have BT corn and a human can digest it, no problem. It's just like normal corn, nothing different, but for those particular insects, they can't digest it and they die. Yeah, and it's the same thing for livestock, livestock and human beings, no problem digesting this protein. So when you think about it, that basically all the plant is doing is producing another protein. We as human beings like and need protein, so there's nothing wrong for us, but for those specific insects, they can't digest it. Well, boy, this is an easy method of control and it's really natural control. So instead of having to go out and spray pesticides, the corn controls the bug itself. Well, so what is the benefit for you? Even if you're not a farmer, you just say, well, all I care about is the environment. How is this good for the environment? Obviously not spraying a pesticide. That's kind of a nice thing because what do pesticides do? Well, they kill most bugs, maybe even all bugs, depending on the pesticide that you choose. Well, if you're wiping out all the bugs, you're wiping out the good guys and the bad guys by putting this specific protein into corn plants, now we just kill one species of bugs. That's awesome to have that kind of selective killing ability and not hurting all the beneficial bugs that are out in nature. Part of the reason why we're talking about this today is undoubtedly at some point you will get questions about GMOs and we just want you to be able to explain, hey, here is BT corn, it's just a natural protein. That protein can get used 
inorganic production when it's sprayed over the top of the crop. So what's the difference if we put it over the top of the crop? And by the way, then we have to spend fuel and labor and everything else getting it applied versus if it's in the crop. To me, it doesn't seem like there should be any difference. We think it's just as safe as anything else that you could possibly use. It's a protein that humans and livestock can naturally digest. Well, one thing that I wish the livestock would digest all of is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this troublesome weed coming up later in the show. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. For more information about this beast, available only in our new gray poly, call 855-CAPELLO or visit capellousa.com to find a dealer near you. Capello, wherever you are, we are. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Ramwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the Soil Warrior. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. Find love and then give it all away. Find love and give it all away. At Harvest, you have one goal finding the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow. Earlier this season, we talked about picking corn hybrids and that looking at defensive traits is going to be important, especially when it came to disease tolerance. Now in season, we have an opportunity once again to protect our crop from disease by using a fungicide once we get up to the V5 to V8 time frame. One of the interesting things we've noticed here in the last few years, because we've done a lot of trials on this, is in our region of the country, and where we farm, by the way, is in eastern South Dakota. When you get out into these western states, we just don't see the same response from a tassel application of fungicide that we typically see in Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, areas of the country where there's certainly a lot more disease pressure and a lot more rainfall than what we get here. For us, where we've typically had the best response from a fungicide has been in this V5 to V8, maybe V9 kind of timing. And one of the things I like about spraying early is we can spray it ourselves. When we go spray at tassel time, most of the time we have to call a plane in. That costs a bunch more money. I like it when it's a job we can do ourselves on the farm. So the big question here, though, is when exactly is the right time? I mean, personally, I would lean toward that V7, V8. Darren, what do you think in that, uh, let's call it V5, all the way to V9 kind of timing? When do you think is the best? I like waiting till a little bit later. I would love it if we could get fungicide on the ear leaf. When you think about grass production, grass crop production, I, I look at wheat. When you've got that flag leaf out there, it is so heavily impacting the final yield of that crop if you can keep the flag leaf clean. The same thing is true in corn. If we can keep that ear leaf clean, that's just a great thing, a great opportunity for us to maximize the amount of sun we can catch on that leaf, the amount of energy we can pump into the ear, and ultimately the yield for the field. The big difference is the ear leaf 
comes out much earlier on corn than the flag leaf on wheat. The flag leaf on wheat, that's basically the last leaf that you're going to look at, whereas the ear leaf, it's going to be down on the plant a little ways. So that's where we talk about this spray timing. I just mentioned V7, V8, maybe it's V9, somewhere in there. That's a really good time to spray. Well, it gets tricky because as you get a little bit later into that growing season, once you're past V8 or so, that corn plant's going to be really susceptible to being injured. So if we've got an oil or a surfactant, for example, with that fungicide and we're driving everything into the plant fast, we can have some issues. We can have arrested ear development or other things happening that are a negative. We don't want any negative. So if we're going to wait and we're going to push it back a little bit later, anytime between that V8 and, and when you're fully tasseled and starting to silk, I would say keep that surfactant out of there. That's going to be a good recommendation. Well, not just Darren saying this, every single company on the planet tells you don't put oil or surfactant in at that timing. In terms of which fungicide to use, there are lots of great ones out there. The number one thing we're going to say is use something that has multiple modes of action. We worry a lot about disease resistance. So if you can get something that's got two or three modes of action on our farm, we have actually seen the best results from three mode of action products or put it another way, we've taken half rates of two different products that each had two modes of action. Well, when we combined them, we now had three modes of action and for us that worked good. So you can experiment with all the different products that there are available, but just try to find something that's got two to three modes of action, either mix yourself or get a premix. It's also important to remember how fungicides work. They're only going to protect the parts of the plant that you spray them on. So if your spray coverage is only getting you a couple of leaves into the canopy, that's all the further you're going to get protection from disease. And some of these diseases like northern corn leaf blight or gray leaf spot can start from the lower parts of the plant and move up. So we want to try and get protection through that canopy as best we can. So do check to see what kind of coverage you're getting through that crop to make sure you're getting the best. I, I like finer droplets as opposed to great big droplets. That's going to help you. And then you're going to need more gallons of water and more pressure to push down through that canopy as well. If you have new leaves emerging a couple days after application, they are not going to be protected. And that's where that tasseling time application later on may come into effect. Last thing I wanted to get to is cost. Now a lot of times we've talked about small crops. You can actually use a half rate because the crop is really tiny and there's nothing wrong with that. So I would just say this, the bigger the crop, the higher the rate is going to have to be. But beyond that, let's take a look at cost. With a lot of the rebate programs, with a lot of the cost reductions out there, your cost for fungicide will be less than it was last year, and that is a really, really good thing. In some cases, you can get some full rates of multiple mode of action products, depending on if you're in on the rebate programs, for four to seven dollars an acre. It's unbelievable. Full rates. So I would just tell you, make sure you're talking to your agronomist. It depends a lot on what else you bought earlier in the year and what direction you want to go now and certainly what rate you want to use. But don't let the cost stand in your way. I'm just trying to say you have this thing in your mind saying, oh, it's going to cost me $20. It's not going to cost you $20. It should cost you $10 or less in a lot of cases. So make sure you're talking to your agronomist. So as your corn reaches that V5 to V8 window, you may consider using a fungicide application. We see some good benefits for preventing disease and also for plant health, which ultimately results in more yield. One other thing that will help you get more yield is stopping our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decom, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decom at eggbio.solutions. 
It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low-cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. We talk so passionately about drain tile all the time because it's fantastic for the environment when it's done right and it is fantastic for you on your farm. Coming out of 2019 where we had all these prevent plant acres, you could really see the difference. The guys that had ample tile had a lot less incidence of any prevent plant and had better yields in most cases. So the question has been, well, when can I put this tile in? I had a rough fall again. Can I actually do it in crop? Absolutely you can. So we want to talk about this today, about when is the best timing, how do you get this in, and how much yield do you expect to lose on this year's crop if you actually go in and tile right now. First of all, if you have a poorly drained spot on your farm, you know it's going to yield less year in and year out. So if you're getting 50 bushel corn, maybe even 100 bushel corn instead of 200 or 250, well, you really aren't giving up much yield if you plow a little bit of that up trying to get the tile in. And that's where I like to start with, guys. Well, how much are you getting for yield in those spots, at least? And they say, well, I'm not getting much, not even half a crop. Well, what are you worried about losing? Now, if you said, I'm going to pattern tile the whole field on 10-foot spacings, all right, you're going to lose something out there. But if you're just problem solving, just taking those little areas and fixing them or just getting a main line run through that you can add laterals to later, there, there's no question, you're just not giving up much yield at all. On our farm, better than half of the tile we put in the ground has been in crop. And here are the advantages to doing it in crop. Number one, it's just the day length. When we can tile at this time of year in May and June, that's fantastic. We have long days, the temperature is warmer, we typically have better ground contact, in other words, basically better traction. We're getting better traction out there. We have to have that. If we start spinning at all, that's where we have to bring in another tractor, have a pole tractor and that leads to more issues. So we love tiling at this time of year. I'll also say this, it's a lot easier for me to find anybody to help us out. Anybody wants to jump down in the hole when it's a nice 70, 80, 90 degree day, as opposed to when we get to November and December and we're dealing with frost. So that's probably the biggest reason why we wanna do it now. In addition to this, the sooner I get tile in the ground, the sooner I have better soil and better yield. So our number one piece of advice to you is just simply tile in crop until the crop reaches a foot tall. So if you are aggressive with this, you've got everything ready to go, tiles sitting there, plows ready to go, all you have to do is unhook your planter and hook the tile plow up. This is pretty easy. You're only gonna have a few days to do this, but that's fine. Get it done while that crop is less than a foot tall. And what you're gonna find is you're not gonna impact yield negatively much at all. We've done a lot of this, like I was saying, we have yet to see it show up negatively on the yield monitor. But keep in mind, in a lot of cases, yeah, we're at 50 foot, 70 foot, maybe even 100 foot spacings. We at least wanna get the main lines in, get the lateral lines in for the very worst spots. We can always add more to that later and certainly at the end of the season. Well, if you don't have your own tile plow and you're hiring a contractor to do the tiling work for you, this is also a great time of year to get it done because guess what? They're not busy. 
they're absolutely swamped in the fall and as long as they want to go in the winter. And really mid-summer you'll start seeing tiling contractors getting booked up to go into wheat acres or, or double crop acres, those kinds of things. Right now, they're looking for work in many cases. This is a great time to get it done and you can get a good rate as well. One of the other things when we started doing this tiling in crop years ago, our dad just said, well, should be pretty easy now because you just got done planting. You definitely remember where the worst areas were. And our advice to you is always, let's take care of the worst areas first. Get those solved, and then you, you can always solve the other areas later. But we want to take the big ones first because that's where we gain the most yield. So when is the best time to start tiling? Well, it's right now if you've got ground that needs tiling and it's going to help you out at harvest time because when are you most concerned about having too much water in the field? It's at planting time and it's at harvest time and it can slow those major, major operations down. And the other point that Brian was making too is that tile's gonna start working right now and start helping you right now. And if you get it out there in crop, it's going to help this year's crop too. Well, another thing that will help this year's crop is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough, but we're tougher with unrivaled weed control, reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the week is spotted spurge. You know, so many of these weeds that I just call ground cover, Brian, I've got a great solution for them. Crop canopy. We get yep. so often emails back from our viewers saying, you know, yeah, it's cool that you have all these herbicides you could use, but what about if I don't want to use herbicides? This is a great example. Where do you see spotted spurge? Well, you see it in your landscaping around your house in between plants where the sunlight's directly hitting it because you don't have any crop canopy. You see it out on the edges of fields where maybe a farmer has turned around in the field and, and wiped out a little bit of crop with his wheel track. Well, what fills in that spot? Spotted spurge or, or in the grass at the edge of the field where it just doesn't have good growth. So crop canopy is the answer to our weed of the week. Well, quite frankly, we talk about this all the time that really herbicides the last choice. We want you to have good drainage. We just talked about tiling. Have good fertility for the crop. Get that crop off to a good start. Have that crop canopy. And yes, then we do have weed control. But in light of hey, this didn't get done, all right, well, now what are you going to suggest? Well, this is a very easy weed to control if you can use some 2,4-D. So a lot of times when we look at different recipes for lawns, 2,4-D is our answer. When we look at grassy areas or ditches, 2,4-D or possibly even dicamba, depending on what the neighboring crop is, both of those will do a great job wiping it out. The challenge gets to be, what if you can't use one of those products? If you can use Roundup, like in your landscaping, and really be careful with it so you don't spray it on desirable plants, that would be my other solution. And out in crop ground, if you've got Roundup or Liberty in the rotation, you won't have any problem with spotted spurge. Yep, so usually where we're seeing this spotted spurge is in areas where there is not crop canopy. 2,4-D, Dicamba, Roundup, Liberty, got lots of good control options. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. 
If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the Soil Warrior. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump, providing the ultimate protection. This wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. Agro-Liquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. At Harvest, you have one goal, finding the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow. to spray for bugs without hurting bees, I'll give you some tips in today's Iron Talk. If you have high levels of harmful insects in your field, spraying an insecticide can certainly help and is likely your best bet. Keeping bee colonies safe is important too, and those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. Here are some steps you can take to protect the bees and your fields from problem insects. The first thing you need to do is have open communications with neighbors and beekeepers. If you simply give notice that you need to spray, the beekeeper has time to plan accordingly. Secondly, time your spray applications appropriately, and this is a real big deal. The most important time to avoid spraying is clearly during flowering. For bees, that's their time to work. Flowering is also the time that you don't want to have to spray your crops anyway as they're highly susceptible to injury. So if you must spray, move your application either to later in the day or when the weather is cool. Another big thing though is why get caught in that predicament in the first place? You know exactly when your crops are going to reach flowering, so scout them and spray either before or, if need be, after flowering. Third, avoid spraying just before rain or dew, which can lead to insecticides staying on the leaf and flower surfaces much longer. Also, product selection can make a huge difference too. Some insecticides have more residual activity and others provide more of a quick knockdown. One particular callout is the neonicotinoid family. Since neonics don't kill bees quickly, in many cases they can actually bring that back to the hive and kill the whole hive. So to minimize or avoid issues, save those neonics for seed treatment use only where they're safely below the ground. Finally, follow labeled rates and spray directions to minimize drift and other potential longer-term impacts. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. 
That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to encourage you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. Just go to agphdinsider.com to learn more. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Thank you.